Well, good morning and welcome to Calvary Baptist Church and to our Sunday worship service. I hope everyone is having a great day and a great week so far. Before I go any further with some announcements, just want to, to make the announcement to you to track down your Bibles and be ready for the message in just a few minutes. We have uh, made the decision to uh, go back to virtual only for the next few weeks. Uh, we will not be in person again for any of our services, worship service, Sunday school, or Wednesday night, until the week of February the 21st. So the next few weeks will just be virtual, will be the only option uh, to be a part of our, our worship. And if you remember, a few months back when we started this, uh, it uh, kind of trimmed everything down and... and uh, uh, so over the next few weeks, we'll be back to kind of our basic service each Sunday morning. We'll add some music back in as the week uh, progress. Uh, but uh, please continue to join with us, and we'll have a message each week. And for each of our other services, Sunday School is still active at 930. You can join that virtually. And then our Wednesday, our two Bible studies on Wednesday, the Wednesday 11 a.m. Bible study, and then the Wednesday evening at 630 Bible study are both being streamed live as well. So I hope you'll join us. But again, today you'll probably uh, notice that things look a little quieter here at the church. We are just virtual. No in-person option for the next few weeks until February the 21st. Let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day. And Lord, I just ask a special prayer for each and every one of us, wherever we are, whenever we are, that Lord, as we take this time to look at your word, I just pray, Father, you will open it into us. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles with you for our message this Sunday morning, if you'll turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to be looking at two passages today. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Go ahead and get your Bibles turned there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And then we will be going to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and then Ephesians chapter 2. If you're getting your Bible ready, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is where we will start. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'll begin reading in verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he had built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire." Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, and that is who you are. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the reading of your word. And Lord, I just pray now that, Father, we will let these words sink into our hearts and our minds. Help us to realize who and what we are. And help us, Father, to serve you. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. In this passage, we find from the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, we see him talking about the temple of God and how we are the temple of God. At the very end of that, as I read, and I'm going to read it again, the last verse there again, the last part of it, verse 17, If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. The message this morning for each and every one of us is for us to be able to realize who and what we are, and then who and what 
we can be. Paul is talking here, if you know the bigger story behind what he's saying in 1 Corinthians, he has gone around, as we know, the Apostle Paul went on his missionary journeys, and he, he went preaching and teaching wherever he went. And wherever he went, he left little pockets of, of churches, little home churches uh, in his wake. And he traveled around, and if you studied Paul's missionary journeys, sometimes he, he would backtrack and, and go back to these places and revisit them. But there were other ministers, other missionaries who were also traveling around and the apostles were doing it, mostly around the Jerusalem and the Holy Land area. Paul branched out into the areas of the Gentiles and to to Greece and Rome and, and those areas. And a man named Apollos was also in the areas where Paul was. And so if you know much of the stories of Paul and his missionary journeys, then some people, Apollos, would come, and, and then he'd preach later after Paul had been there, and, and it created some confusion. And this is what Paul's talking about. The, the foundation is Jesus. I started to build. Now somebody's adding to that. Uh, but that's okay. The foundation always has to be Jesus. And so that's really the the measuring stick that Paul is sharing there. Just make sure that the foundation is always Jesus, not something else, not some other philosophy, not some other not not man, not man's wisdom, but it always goes back to Christ. Then he's got an interesting discussion about us that once we have accepted Christ and once we become his that then we start to build the temple. We start to, to, to build upon our faith and, and to grow in Christ. And as he says in that passage, some people are, are able to put gold and silver on this foundation, some wood and straw. There's a lot going on, a lot of different building projects going on. And one day, all of those building projects will, will be measured by God, judged by God. Paul gives us the description here of uh, tried with fire and then whatever is left whatever can withstand the fire and for us and in, in our lives it's those trials in life what is it about us that can withstand those trials that through it all we we still stand strong hopefully in our faith it's those things that we've put our energy into and it's those things that that God will will judge one day he says something very interesting that when the fire comes, it's going to burn things away. And for those who've got stuff still standing, great reward. But I want us to notice a part of that passage where it says, those whose building does not stand, they will suffer loss, as the Scripture says. But notice what Paul says in there. But their salvation is secure. Let me read that again in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 15, if any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. How is that? When we think about this and think about, hey, well, if somebody, if we are building a life for Christ and our body, our lives are this temple of God that, that shows the world the love of Christ, if that burns away, if what we're doing adds up to nothing and it burns away, how is it we save ourselves when nothing that has been done survives this is where Paul goes back and says remember the foundation the foundation is Christ Jesus then he gets into the discussion of you're the temple of God back in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 12 we find the story of the Passover and in Exodus chapter 12 the Lord is going to send His angel over Egypt. The Israelites are slaves in Egypt, and the Lord is urging the Egyptians and asking the Egyptians through Moses to let His people go. And, and as you know that story, the, the Egyptians wouldn't. And so the Lord was going to send His angel to fight for the Israelites and, and to, to defeat their enemies. And in that story, Moses gives them the instruction to, to sacrifice a lamb and to put the blood on your doorpost. And by putting that blood on the doorpost, it would mark for the angel of God where God's people were. And they would be protected. They would be unharmed. Now, with that story and coming back now to our 1 Corinthians and realizing what Paul is saying here, 
that when Christ Jesus is the foundation of our lives, we are marked by him. We are marked by his blood and by his sacrifice. And with that, it doesn't mean that what's on the inside is is all in order and what it should be. Here in this passage, Paul's talking about here, you're a temple of God and you're marked by Christ. And what you got going on in the inside might not be perfect. And it might not withstand the trials of life. It might not withstand the judgment of God. But your foundation is secure. You are marked by Christ Jesus. Your salvation is always secure. Today in your life, you may not feel very secure. You may be looking around and realizing that what's going on in my house isn't stable. It's not going to withstand the trials of life. It's not, it's not withstanding the trials. It's not going to withstand the judgment of God. Maybe we realize right now that, that our actions, our, our commitments in life, where we've put most of our focus in life, when it's all said and done, that's going to fall away. And we might feel right now that because of that, that we are useless. That we are sinful and unwanted and unloved. But that's the beauty of this passage. You are loved. You are secure. For our Christians who are listening to this, who have given their hearts to Christ Jesus, you have undoubtedly made many mistakes since that day. You have built things in your life that you shouldn't have built. You have been part of things you shouldn't have been a part of. And all of those things are going to burn away one day. All of those things are going to amount to nothing. Things that you've put a lot of energy into. But know this. You are the temple of God. And holy is what you are. Because of the blood of Christ, because of his victory. Turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 2 now. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to start reading in verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Got a rather large passage here I want to read, but let's get through it. If you don't have your Bibles open, I'm going to give you another moment. Ephesians chapter 2. Don't just listen to me drone on here. Look at God's Word. Let it apply to your life. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Here is Paul again, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time separate from God, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by it having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to those who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have our access and one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. A lot of reading there, a lot of Scripture, but something that we need to see because it matches up with what Paul says in Corinthians. We are the temple of God, and that means holy is what we are. And as I've said right now, there's none of us 
probably feel holy. We look at our yesterdays and maybe even our this mornings, and we find that we have not done holy things. We have not been who, who God would want us to be. But the Scripture says, anyway, holy is what you are. Why is that? How is that? The only way that can be said, the only way our sinful selves, our unholy selves can be called holy is if somebody saves us, is if somebody else marks us for holiness with their righteousness, with their holiness. That person is Christ Jesus. He gave his life. As Ephesians says, his death, destroyed the enmity between God and man. That all we've got to do now is to mark ourselves with the blood of Christ Jesus. How do we do that? We do that by committing our lives to Him, making Him Lord of our lives. And it does not mean that with a snap of the fingers then that we are this perfect holy temple of God. But what it does mean is the outside's been put up. The door frame has been put up to our, pil- our temple, our building. And that door frame has been marked with the blood of Christ. And so what does God see? He sees holiness. Now, this world might look at us and, and say otherwise. This world looks at us and they see the sins that we're struggling with. They see the inaction we might have, the missteps we might have, the mistakes we make along the way. And because of those mistakes, they will call us unholy. They will call us wicked. They will call us hypocritical, whatever. But note what the Scripture says. Holy is what you are. So if this world has an issue with with the body of Christ, if this world has an issue with you and, and your holiness, they can take it up with the contractor, Christ Jesus. Because as he says in Ephesians chapter 2, there towards the end, I want to read verse 21 again, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple. So what's our part in all of this? When we see what Christ has done for us, Christ, it's His holiness, it's His sacrifice that makes us holy, that covers us, that covers our sins, that covers our shame. So what are you and I to be doing? Do we just sit back and let Jesus do all the sacrificing and while we do nothing? While we continue to live in sin? While we continue to make our mistakes? And No, you and I should be growing into that temple. We are that temple. And now we need to grow into it. How do we grow into it? We grow into it by keeping the commandments of God and and by getting up every day. Every time we fall down, we get back up. We repent. and We try again. Day in and day out. Going back to the 1 Corinthians chapter 3 passage, he talks about being tried by fire. One day we will stand in judgment before God. And all of our actions and all of our deeds are going to be, as he says, cast into the fire to see what burns up and what holds up. There's going to be a fire for each and every one of us. There's going to be a lot of things in our lives that we've put a lot of energy into that's going to burn away. For some, we may have a lot of structure that remains. For some of us, there may be very little structure that remains. But the foundation will always remain. If you know Christ Jesus. And that's all that matters in the end. Today, we live in a world of uncertainty. We're all struggling with what to do next and what's the next few days going to be like? What are the next few months going to be like? What is all this going to do to our futures? We don't know. But what we do know is that Christ Jesus lives and that He is the one who has secured our future. And so the challenge for the Christians listening to this today is to keep 
growing in your faith. Keep working in those areas that are helping you grow into the temple that the Lord has built around you. For those here today who have never accepted Christ, but you're tired of being alone, you're tired of being on unstable ground, accept Him today. It doesn't matter about your yesterdays. It doesn't matter about your today. It matters, do you know Christ Jesus? Accept Him today. Ask Him into your heart. Let Him in His righteousness, with His victory, declare victory for you. And then from this moment forward, you can spend your life building upon the foundation that will never crumble, that will never die. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for these words of encouragement that, Lord, you've made us to, to last forever with you. And what that takes is a relationship. Father, for the Christians here who we forget to nurture that relationship, we forget to commit to it. We, we are distracted. Help us to come back to you. Help us to lift our heads high, turn back to you, and get back to work. And grow into the temple you want us to be. For those here today, Lord, listening to this, who, who know that right now, if today was it for me, there would be no foundation that remained. Lord, if they realize that right now, I pray that they'll come to you. That right now, wherever they are, they will ask you into their hearts. They will commit themselves to learning more about you, growing in your word, and living their lives according to your commandments. Father, for anyone who listening to this feels, Lord, that they are inadequate, feels, Lord, that they are unlovable or unloved. I hope they realize now, today, what an awesome Savior they can have. One that loves and forgives. One that saves. And who will never take that salvation back. No matter the mistakes. Help us all, Lord, each and every day to realize in our lives Christ Jesus. For it's in His name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in today. I hope you have a great day and a great week. Look forward to seeing you tuning in with us. Our next broadcast will be 11 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. Of course, it will be uh, filmed, and you can watch that anytime. But I uh, hope you'll tune in and join us for our Bible studies this week. God bless, and have a great day.